Welcome to the Bed Bug Apocalypse. One hundred years ago, bed bugs were everywhere. Back in the turn of the century, one out of every three Americans were dealing with a bed bug infestation. Then, in the late 1950s, they disappeared. People lived bed bug free, and they forgot about the tiny parasitic insects that once plagued the nation. They weren't a problem, they were something you didn't have to really think about. But now, they are back. Having reports of them in movie theaters, in our retail stores. You could find them on the train, on the plane. You can get them in high-end hotels. They're everywhere. Today, one in five Americans has had or knows someone who has had bed bugs. The insects are spreading at the fastest rate in recorded history. If we never deal with bed bugs, pretty much you can be guaranteed that you're going to take bed bugs home with you. You are going to know 10 people, 100 people in your circle that have had bed bugs. So what, if anything, can be done about the problem? This is the story of America's war on bed bugs. It's thought that last year, around 15 million people in the United States contracted bed bugs. And every day, more and more families are waking up to find they've become prey to blood-sucking parasites. I kept thinking, I'm the mom and I need to take care of this. Today, 20% of Americans admit to having or knowing someone that has bed bugs. And in notorious hotbeds like New York or Cincinnati, the numbers are even higher. The situation is out of control, and it's getting worse. In the last two years, cases nationwide have jumped 500%. It feels like bed bugs are a brand new thing, but they've been with us since the dawn of time. Humans and bed bugs have been living side by side for thousands of years. European history is littered with tales of the parasitic pests. But it wasn't until around the 17th century that bedbugs arrived in the U.S. As people migrated across the Atlantic, so did the bedbugs. In the United States, one out of every three Americans were dealing with bedbugs. Then, in the late 1940s, there came a crucial turning point in the battle against bedbugs. The arrival of a powerful new pesticide that nearly wiped the critters off the map for good. Its name... DDT. In the 1940s and 50s, DDT was used extensively to kill agricultural pests, mosquitoes, and household insects like bed bugs. It was the miracle go-to way of killing insects, and it worked beautifully. Between 1940 and 1970, almost 700,000 tons of DDT were used in the United States. It was a brand new world. Now you could live bed bug free the whole year round for the first time in human history. For a brief moment, people forgot that bed bugs even existed. But history would prove DDT to be a double-edged sword. Millions of bed bugs were killed, but a few developed a resistance to the pesticide and survived. Over time, this brood of mutant superbugs began to breed. And then we start hearing rumors. And by the year 2000, it starts trickling in. Two or three year, then 20, 50. No one knows for certain why bedbugs reemerged so suddenly in the late 1990s. Something's happened in the last 10 years, and we don't know what, that's caused them to have this huge resurgence. One theory is that an increase in international travel could have sent bedbugs back to the U.S. Another revolves around the banning of a slew of household insecticides in the mid-90s. It's thought that these pesticides had been keeping bed bugs in check, and when they became unavailable, the insect population exploded. But one thing's certain. Today, bed bugs are extremely difficult to kill. Ten years ago, the number of bed bug complaints logged by New York City stood at 100. 
In 2010, the number of complaints had risen to 31,000. The bed bug apocalypse is upon us. This problem is big, it's growing, and it's going to be with us for a while. The bed bug's ability to find new hosts is only half the story. What they do when they infest a new location is breed. In just 12 months, one pair of breeding bed bugs can spawn a population of over a quarter of a million. It's not just the numbers that are shocking. One of the most puzzling things about bed bugs is the way that they mate, and they do that using something called traumatic insemination. And so every time a male mates with a female, he has to literally punch a hole through her skin to get his sperm inside her. The female recovers quickly, and within 24 hours, she begins to lay eggs. One female can lay up to 500 eggs in her lifetime. When it's time to lay eggs, she can lay them anywhere she wants. They're sticky, and she can hide them in places that they would never be found. USA. 2011. Billions of pesticide-resistant bed bugs are spreading across the country, and getting rid of them seems nearly impossible. In 1945, a single dose of DDT was all it took to kill a bed bug. Today, some bed bugs can endure over 250 doses of the equivalent pesticide. One of the challenges is that we don't have a magic bullet to kill all the bed bugs. Almost 70% of all bed bug infestations require three or more treatments. And the costs can be exorbitantly expensive. Last year, Americans spent more than $250 million trying to get rid of bed bugs. The United States is at war with bed bugs. And the bed bugs are winning. One reason for the insect's success is that bed bugs are perfectly adapted to survive even when food isn't plentiful. Bed bugs have a life history strategy that works very well for what they do because they can go long periods of time without feeding and just stay dormant and survive and wait. Lab tests prove that bed bugs can live for as long as a year and a half without feeding. But most bed bugs don't need to wait this long. No one understands this better than Dr. Lewis Sorkin, an entomologist at the American Museum of Natural History. He keeps a colony of bed bugs for study. But every bed bug needs food. And for Sorkin, there's no better way to feed them than to roll up his sleeve. The way I feed them is invert the jar on my arm, and they can put their mouth part, their stylets, through the holes. Drawn to the warmth of Sorkin's skin, the bed bug colony quickly gravitates towards their meal. They pick up the odor of the arm, if they would have picked up a carbon dioxide from me breathing. Bugs that are already on top of the jar are, have started to feed. Bed bugs leave behind a painful, itchy rash. And when 1,000 bed bugs feed at once, they leave behind a giant welt. While they aren't thought to transmit disease, recent research shows some do carry dangerous pathogens, including MRSA. But outside the lab, bed bugs can be attracted to their food source from up to 100 feet away. It might seem like humans are fighting a losing battle, but there are ways to fight back. Trained dogs can help with detection by sniffing out the bugs. Carbon dioxide vapor can be used to flash freeze the parasites. And in spite of their apparent invincibility, bed bugs do have one fatal weakness. The Achilles heel of bed bugs is heat. They cannot survive high temperatures. And so if you can get the temperature above 120 degrees for a sustained period of time, they have no mechanism to deal with that excess heat. Up until now, humans have been using heat to kill bed bugs one by one. But can heat be used to fight bed bugs on a larger scale? Cincinnati, Ohio. A team from Gold Seal Pest Control is about to treat an infested five-bedroom home. The house has a sizable bed bug population. In order to kill them all, the team will raise the temperature in the house to 140 degrees. Using industrial heaters and long metal ducts, the team pumps hot, dry air into the house. 
but to make sure they don't leave any cold pockets where bed bugs could survive, the team has to go inside as well. What I'm using here is a thermal imaging camera, which will help me find cold spots as well as determine hot spots. The sudden rise in temperature disturbs the bed bugs, and they begin to emerge from hiding. This bed bug here is starting to experience disorientation. Up here, we're finding very small nymphs moving, and eventually, they'll all come out and simply desiccate or dry out and die. When the interior of the house reaches 140 degrees, all bed bug movement stops. And at 140 degrees, they're dying within minutes. They're dying before they even know what's hit them. This method is one of the few ways to destroy an entire bed bug population in just one day. America, 2011. Welcome to the post-apocalyptic bed bug world.